Jerusalem artichokes, otherwise known as sen chokes, earth apples, sen roots, originate from Central North America, but they can be grown right throughout the temperate area. I love growing Jerusalem artichokes at home, not only for their tubers, but for their sunflower like flowers too. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can grow Jerusalem artichokes for the best results at home. I'm Tony O'Neill and this is Simplify Gardening, where I show you how to garden in a simpler way. If you want that perfect garden to relax in or just want to grow your own nutrient-dense foods, then start now by clicking the subscribe button and the bell icon. Then click all to be notified each time I release new content just like this. Jerusalem artichokes are really easy to grow and if you can grow potatoes then you can grow Jerusalem artichokes. Now they will grow in most soil types but they prefer a pH of around 6.5 to 7 on the scale. Jerusalem artichokes aren't grown from seed, they're grown from tubers, much like potatoes. Jerusalem artichokes are huge feeders and it's necessary to prepare the bed before planting. Now, like all tubers, Jerusalem artichokes like loose soil to grow in. So when preparing the bed, turn that soil over and loosen up that soil. And then before planting, give it a good feed of a balanced feed, something like blood, fish and bone meal. And Jerusalem artichokes, they are prolific growers. They will spread right out of the growing bed and into other areas of the garden if left unchecked. So I would recommend growing them in areas where you can contain them, whether that's uh, a dedicated bed that has uh, stone sides down it or some steel sheeting, something like that. Just something that will prevent them from pushing out into other areas of the garden. When planting your tubers, plant them around six inches deep and about 12 inches apart. Don't be tempted to plant them any closer together because these plants get huge above ground and they need that space. So six inches deep, 12 inches apart. They can be companion planted too, but if you're growing in rows, what I would suggest is you plant them around four feet apart um, because these are really large plants. And they also do really well in containers. So when you're planting them, just like I do with the potatoes, plant them in a good heavy container because like I said, there's a lot of top growth on these and the wind will catch them and tip them over if you don't have a sturdy base. So make sure that container is heavy. Like potatoes, Jerusalem artichokes only need a single eye or chit in which to grow. So you can greatly reduce the cost of starting a Jerusalem artichoke bed by cutting the tubers and allowing them to dry before planting. As long as each piece has an eye or a chit of its own, then it will grow into a brand new plant. When planting, plant around six weeks before your last frost. And this will uh, be the amount of time that the tuber is sending around its roots and pushing up its first growth. So that's the perfect time, six weeks before that last frost. And this is also the perfect time in which to get your support structures in, because like I said, Jerusalem artichokes get really tall. So uh, now is the time to get it in so that you don't damage them later on. And as I've said before, Jerusalem artichokes, well, they get really tall and they get battered by the winds. But in early summer, you can cut the tops of these plants to reduce their height. But if you do this, bear in mind that you'll have no crop of flowers at the end of summer because it will delay that. And the likelihood is it, they won't grow back quick enough in time before the first frosts. They're thirsty plants and you should water them regularly if it doesn't rain. The amount of water that you give this crop will greatly affect the size and the quality of the tubers that you get later on in summer. Harvesting is easy too. Simply cut off the stalks and even though these stalks look dead, the tubers below the ground are nice and safe and fresh but the tops of the plants will die with the first frosts. After the harvest, it's important to cure the Jerusalem artichokes. To do this, simply lay them out in a tray and leave them in the sun for a few hours. But if it's poor weather or it's raining, take them indoors into a greenhouse or a polytunnel. Leave them dry for a couple of hours and uh, they'll be good to store. Once dried, 
they could be stored much like potatoes in a hessian sack or a paper sack but i really like to store mine in plastic containers with damp sand or damp compost slugs and snails can be the biggest pest issue for jerusalem artichokes and i have many videos on this that will show you how to control those slugs and snails including adding things like ponds now i'll put a link in the description below should you wish to watch that the main disease for this plant is sclerotina now sclerotina is a fungal disease that rots the plants at their base and it produces a white fluffy mold now plants affected with this mold um, they should not be composted they should be burnt instead because compost at home they can't get high enough to destroy the pathogen or the fungal spores within this and it will live in the soil for long periods of time otherwise so make sure that you burn or destroy the uh, plant growth if it's affected with this if you've got value from this video then you can subscribe here and once you've done that if you want to learn how to control those snails and slugs then this is the next video that you should watch i'm tony o'neill this is simplify gardening where i show you how to garden in a simpler way remember folks you reap what you sow and i'll see you in the next one bye bye